I was doing a little dinner for about 25 pastors, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. I'm not sure how far along ago it was. And I was talking along the lines of these principles because, listen, after being in our financial situation nine years and you get out and you see like a light bulb, things begin to change and you begin to step into things you've only dreamt about, you're pretty excited. (laughs) So I was talking, we concluded the meeting and all the pastors left and then we were cleaning the room up. One had been sitting in the car waiting to come back in because it was, you know, they they knew each other and he didn't want to speak in front of all these friends. So he came in after the meeting. His wife and he came up with a $100 check. He said, this is the end of our money. We want to sow this. We lose our house on Friday. We need $7,700 to bring it current. We have no checks. We have no income before that date. We have no hope. We're going to sow this, believe, believe in God for, uh, you know, a way of escape. So we prayed with them. Now, in their garage, they had a silkscreen machine. They would do some T-shirts every once in a while for youth groups or some small projects. But that Monday, this meeting was on Saturday night. That Monday, they received three calls for business for silkscreening. They had to hustle to get it done, but they did $8,700 in five days, and they brought their house current. He's pretty excited about that. Right now, you should be thinking and asking questions, how did that happen? That was the largest week he ever had, ever, and they called him. How did that happen? I was in another pastor's meeting down south. I think it was Charlotte. I don't remember that meeting was. It was in South Carolina, I think, or North Carolina. Anyway, it was down south. 250 pastors. I was in the room, and this pastor comes over very excitedly. I need to shake your hand. I mean, he was, I got to shake your hand. Well, that's fine. Okay, yeah. He says, I got to tell you my story. He lives in Germany. He said, my son came into the study one weekend as I was, one week as I was preparing for that weekend's message, and he came up to me and said, I want you to agree with me for a PlayStation 2. He said, what? He says, well, I got these CDs by Gary Cassie. I don't know how he, he's only like 10, 12 years old. I mean, maybe 12. How, I don't know how he got my CDs in Germany. I don't know. But he had them, and his dad didn't know he had them. <laughs> maybe a friend, I don't know. He's listening to these CDs, and he says, you know, I, I, I'd like to have a PlayStation 2, Dad, and I want to sew for that, and I want to call it done according to Mark eleven twenty four. I want to believe God for a PlayStation 2. His dad said, all right, I'll agree with you. So they prayed and they agreed. And the next day a guy called the dad and said, is your son available? I need, I need some work done today. And he did the work and he got the money that day and he paid cash for his PlayStation 2. Now that kind of changed his mindset, right? Just like Peter, James, and John, they were so astonished. They left everything. They saw a different system operate. He saw a system operate. So two weeks later, he comes back to his dad and says, I want you to agree with me for one more thing. What's that? I want you to agree with me for muscles. (laughs) His dad said, well, wait a minute. You know, that's going to take, uh, you're you're going to be involved with that. I said, I know, Dad. I know. I just want to, I'm going to believe God for muscles. He said, all right. They agreed. They prayed. The next morning, a station wagon pulls into the driveway. He recognizes it's a member of their church, comes to the front door and says, hey, we are cleaning the garage out. And I just thought maybe your son might want this set of barbells that I haven't used for all these years that were just sitting in my garage. I brought them by, just thought maybe he might like them. Now, this pastor here in uh, South Carolina looked at me and says, that's when I told my son, give me those CDs. (laughs) Yeah. I got this letter from a partner from Keith. He's probably watching right now, Keith. Great story. Keith's been a partner for a number of years here. I'll read it. Once again, I find myself crying as I attempt to write this message to you. Six years ago, when Keith and I first saw you on Sid Roth and ordered those first CDs, we could not possibly have imagined the journey we were about to take. It has been a wild ride. We knew that your message was a true revelation to you from God and that we needed to immerse ourselves in your teaching to wash away all the religion and lies about God we've been taught. 
Today, we joined your service online and cried through most of it as we rejoiced in what God has done through and for us. A short version of our story is that two weeks after we moved into our new home, Keith lost his job. This would have destroyed him and caused him much fear if he had not been well-versed in your teachings. For that, we greatly thank you. It was a blessing in disguise. He started a trucking company with, that part, with part of his retirement fund. A few months after he started, a friend called him and asked him to come and talk about doing some hauling for a, another company that he had worked for. Keith didn't go for several months because he thought that he was too busy. However, this friend was persistent, and Keith finally went to meet with him. And during the meeting, this friend slid a check across the desk showing Keith how much his company was paying a different trucking company for a single week of work. It was $50,000. This blew Keith's mind, but it gave him something to believe in. As you have taught us, you can see it, you can have it. He came home with a new vision for his business. So we started the new, the new what do you call it, the regrouping or the, the relaunch of our business, if you will. And the first week, we made $8,718 exclamation mark. That's pretty good money, right? We thought we'd really made it big, but God was not done. Keith had struggled with tithing all of his life. It wasn't that he was a, uh, not a giving kind of person. He simply did not see how the math would work if he tithed. I told him that it was a supernatural event, and I prayed that God would blow his mind when he started to tithe consistently. Well, he really did. Last week, Less than a year later, uh, we sent this company an invoice for our trucking, our trucking company for $31,775.84 for one week of work. We stand and release our faith with you every week. We give all the glory to God. We thank him every day for you and your ministry. We know that we would still be on that hamster wheel of work and toil if it were not for you and your ministry. I just had to tell you this good news. By the way, we expect another record-breaking week this week. Keith, good job. Think bigger, Keith. Keep going. And I would, I would say this to Keith. Keith, now start thinking national, you know. You got the prototype, now duplicate it. All right. Here's another email I received this week. Excuse my English, she says. Last year on the same date, I was buying Christmas presents with credit cards taking the cards to the limit because I didn't have any money to buy presents for my daughter who still believed in Santa Claus. I lived in constant anxiety and sadness, and I wrote to Pastor Gary on this website that this sewing thing just doesn't work. Nothing's happened. And he very patiently answered me and said, wait, the harvest doesn't always come the very next day. Today, I'm buying presents for my, all my family with cash, I'm buying presents that cost three and four hundred dollars a piece. I'm honoring people who helped me, helped me in those difficult times. Last year, I lived in a room in a basement that some friends allowed me to stay there for a few months. I didn't even have enough money to buy food or gasoline. I now live in a beautiful and fancy apartment, and my refrigerator is full of food. December 3rd was my daughter's birthday. We took her to Hershey Park in Pennsylvania. We invited her best friend. We stayed at the Hershey Hotel. We paid cash for everything, and she got gifts that cost hundreds of dollars. Um, last year, I was humiliated when someone gave me $30 to celebrate my daughter's birthday. I cannot even write this post without weeping. I am so grateful to Pastor Gary and his wife. This year has been the best year of my life. The things God has done in my life are wonderful. I could write a book with all my stories. Thank you, Pastor Gary, for teaching me that I can live heaven on earth. I like that. All right? And so can you. So can you. But as I'm even saying these words, a lot of you, those thoughts are canceling what I'm saying. Uh, not for me. I don't know. I, I'm just, I don't know about that. I don't know. I've tried so hard. I don't know. Yeah, you've tried hard. They fished all night and caught nothing. We're not saying you didn't try hard. We're just saying there's another law. There's another system. You need to learn how it operates, Right? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. That's in the New Testament. There remains a Sabbath rest for you. Now, what could they not do on the Sabbath? They couldn't sweat toil. They couldn't, they couldn't work. So if you can't work on the Sabbath, 
how do you exist on the Sabbath if you can't work? We've got to find that out. The Bible says there is a Sabbath rest for you. Verse 10, for anyone who enters God's rest, now this is important, anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work just as God did from his. Now we go back to Genesis to find out what they're saying. Let me read it again. For anyone who enters God's rest, now in in, uh, six days he made the, the earth, right? The seventh day it says he rested. He was not tired. The Bible says that he was, it was complete and he was finished. That's why he rested. Are you getting this? So when the Bible says anyone who enters into God's rest also rests from his own work. Why? Because he already has everything that's complete. Just as God rested from his. Why did God rest? Help me out. Why did God rest? He was finished. Not tired. He was finished and everything was there for man to live on the earth realm. Man was created at the end of the sixth day to live in the seventh day. Everything was there. Everything was there. Everything was there. There was no stress. When we enter into God's rest, everything's complete. We rest. Does that make sense? I mean, if if your, your bills are paid and you got groceries, you're not stressed, right? That's basically what it's saying is that when everything's complete and in the kingdom, everything is complete, everything has been made new and you have access to the kingdom, you'll find rest. If you enter into God's rest, everything's complete. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.